The sound picture you are about to see and hear comes to you through the lens and loudspeakers of the new RCA 16mm motion picture sound projector, which is finding wide use by public schools for educational work, industrial sales organizations, and homes. This RCA projector and its sound equipment were developed by the same engineers responsible for the marvelous lifelike sound in the world's largest theater, the Music Hall. RCA Photophone Sound is used in over 6,000 movie theaters in the United States and throughout the world. Here is an actual picture of sound photographed on film through the use of the RCA Photophone ultraviolet light recording equipment. Major movie producers in Hollywood and throughout the world use RCA recording equipment to photograph high fidelity sound on film. Whenever you need any motion picture sound projection or recording equipment, look to RCA, the largest sound organization in the world. After 10 years of experiment, television, first shown to the public at the World's Fair, now takes its place as a new American art and industry. With the inauguration of regular television broadcasts from NBC, one of the RCA services, set owners in metropolitan New York enjoy the novel experience of receiving pictures through the air. But an examination of the set contributes little to an understanding of the subject. Except for the screen and slanted mirror that reflects the image to the audience, it is much like a radio in appearance. But in the RCA Victor Laboratories, where television equipment has been developed, we get a better view of the tubes that have added two new words to our vocabulary. The iconoscope for the camera and the kinescope for the receiver. The iconoscope is mounted behind the lens in this crude laboratory camera. The lens focuses the image of the experimental chart upon a metal plate in the tube, and the iconoscope turns the image into electricity. In a nearby laboratory, receiver, the kinescope tube is inserted. This tube receives the electrical impulses created in the iconoscope tube and recreates the image. As the tube is turned on, we see the pattern of the scanning beam of electrons that moves back and forth across its face over 13,000 times a second and carries the electrical impulses that create the picture. In the laboratory, the iconoscope and kinescope are connected by wire. But in actual broadcast, the NBC television transmitter atop the Empire State Building sends the program out from this antenna by imposing it on a very short radio wave, which acts as a carrier for both the picture and sound. These short radio waves travel only in a straight line and cannot follow the Earth's surface. Therefore, the limit of television is the distance from the antenna to the horizon. From the Empire State Building, a program can be sent only as far as the eye can see on a perfectly clear day. In New York, programs are sent to the transmitter over a special cable from the television studios in Radio City, three quarters of a mile away, or are sent by radio to the transmitter by the mobile units, which cover sporting events, outdoor celebrations, and spot news of all kinds. A mobile television unit consists of two large trucks. One of these is a rolling control room and amplifier, and the other is a small radio transmitter which sends the program over the air to the main transmitter in the Empire State Building. Typical of programs covered by the mobile television units is a horse race, and this unit pulls into the racetrack early in the morning to start the elaborate preparations of setting up to cover the race. In the rear of one truck are reels of the special coaxial cable that carries the picture from the camera to the trucks. While this is dragged out, engineers raise the antenna on top of the truck from which the program will be broadcast. And the cameramen set up the portable iconoscope camera atop the grandstand. Inside the truck, equipment is tested and the coaxial cable is raised to the roof of the stand to connect camera and trucks. With a connection made, the camera is turned on for a test and engineers stand by as race time approaches. Then on top of the stand, announcer Clem McCarthy takes his place beside the television camera and the program goes on the air. Judge Hasten on the extreme outside keeps stepping out of his stall, delaying the start as the 12 thoroughbreds line up at the gate. 
Now they're all in there and behaving nicely. Look out, they're off. Interpreter number two breaks in front. And as the field races past the stands, it's Interpreter on top with Sunfax in second place. The field is closely bunched as they rush to the first turn, but they've a long way to go. It's still anybody's race. Down the back stretch, Sunfax is dropping back. And as they turn into the home stretch, Albert D leads by two lengths with Mundu at second ahead of a closely bunched field. Down the stretch, Albert D turns on more speed. He increases his lead. He's too fast for Mundu it. And Albert D by four lengths is the winner. As in radio, many television programs will come from the specially equipped studios such as this one in Radio City. Here under the bright lights required for indoor broadcast, preparations are underway to televise an orchestral program. The special lights of the television studios are placed under the direction of the cameraman. Most of these lights are suspended from the ceiling and controlled by cords by means of which they can be raised, lowered, or turned by a technician on the floor below. In the control booth above the studio, the program director and engineers prepare for their part in the broadcast. Here the picture and sound are amplified for their trip to the transmitter, and the quality is checked on a viewing screen. Cameramen and engineers wear earphones through which they receive instruction throughout the broadcast from the director. As the first step in the program, the title camera is trained on the printed title. And these are sent out over the air. Then at a signal from the director, the television broadcast gets underway. Each of the cameras used in this broadcast is making a different angle of the same scene. This long shot camera is permanently placed to get a view of the entire orchestra. A second camera on a wheel truck is used to make close-ups of the orchestra and its individual members. And this is rolled around the studio during the broadcast. On the screen in the control room, we see a scene made by the close-up camera. After this has run for a few seconds, the control engineer switches over to the other camera and the scene changes to a long shot of the entire orchestra. The director manipulates the cameras to keep the scene changing and to avoid monotony, instructing the cameramen and engineers by telephone as the program progresses. All right, switch to one. Now roll into a close-up of the string section. Now pan across the orchestra from the brass to the strings. Now back to your original position and pan over to include the conductor. And so a new American industry has been born. Television is taking its place as another important and vital contribution to our daily lives. It is a modern miracle, a new public service produced by combining RCA laboratory science with manufacturing skill. The research problem of yesterday is the radio marvel of today. Another milestone of progress has been passed and science has made a reality of the age-old dream of pictures from the sky. Thank you.